Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be building a rocket ship bookcase for my firstborn child who is due in just a few weeks. I wanted to make this build approachable by almost anyone. I saw some similar bookcases for sale online for upwards of 600 bucks and I thought that was outrageous as all you really need is some plywood and a jigsaw. I also hate it when I see sometimes something really cool being built on YouTube but then someone uses some obscure tool that I don't have and makes it hard for me to copy. All this to say, I set out to make this as cheaply and with as simple tools as possible. Okay, so because of those big curves on the side of the rocket ship, I had this grand idea to utilize the method I used to use to cheat in art class, which is projecting onto my paper and tracing the image. I thought this was a good idea, as it worked when outlining portraits, and in theory it should work in this scenario too, but in practice it didn't quite go so well for me. Because my design drawings are proportional, I chose an easy to measure known dimension and reason that if I adjust the projector until that measurement's correct, the remaining measurement should also be correct. This is why you see me taking a measurement, adjusting the projector, measuring, adjusting, measuring, adjusting. My first inkling that this wasn't the best idea was when I started to trace out the image and realized I didn't have nice crisp lines to trace. They were all a bit fuzzy, uh, but I figured I spent all this time setting it up, so I'd do my best tracing and see how it came out. Unfortunately, when I was verifying dimensions, the total length didn't match up. It actually measured three inches short. So after some frustration, I figured it was probably due to the plywood not being flush up against the wall and that I set the projector up at an angle when I was trying to move the image up and down instead of actually raising the entire projector and keeping the projection perpendicular with the plywood. At this point, I just decided to change strategies. I actually went back to the designs and made the product more manufacturable. I realized that I originally designed this thing like it should be cut out using a CNC router instead of by hand with a jigsaw. Uh, I actually almost bought a CNC to make this project really simple, but that and would have broken my rule for using simple tools and keeping this project approachable. You can see I added another piece of plywood on top of my main sheet. I'll be drawing out the rocket ship on this piece and then cutting out both sides of the ship together. Some people like to build things without plans and I am not one of them. I usually spend about as much time designing my projects as I do actually building them. I don't normally create step-by-step -step instructions, but I do spend a lot of time creating accurate dimension drawings of every piece that goes into the build. I also always go back into the, to the designs after I finish the build and make any changes I thought would make the process or product better. So if you're interested in buying any of my designs, you can actually get them on my Etsy store for just a couple bucks. I'll link below. If you've been stuck in the stone ages and don't have one of these digital tape measures, you're missing out. They're not too expensive and are accurate down to a thousandth of an inch, which is pretty cool. Getting back to those large, odd curves of the rocket ship, I added in reference dimensions to my designs that are the distance to the curve from the flat edge, and they're spaced out every three inches. So once I transfer those to my plywood, I can just connect the dots to make the curve. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably noticed that I don't usually talk this much, or really at all. So let me know in the comments if you like this style of video, or if you think I should just keep my mouth shut. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, I do ask that you consider subscribing. It would really help me out and keeps me motivated to share more of my work. If you haven't enjoyed this video, well, then I appreciate you taking the time to watch so far and would appreciate any feedback you may have in the comments. Here I'm adding some double-sided sticky tape to keep my plywood pieces from moving, but if you're gonna do this yourself, I'd just skip the tape or at least get some better tape than I had on hand. Uh, it wasn't secure enough and I ended up just clamping the pieces together anyway, so totally not necessary. At this point, it's time to actually make our first cut almost five minutes into this video. But the hard part about the entire build is actually done. 
Transferring the design from paper to plywood was the big challenge, and everything else should be fairly trivial. It might be tempting at this point to unclamp the two pieces, but now is actually a good time to do a little shaping of the curves using 80 grit sandpaper. My curves came out a little wobbly from the jigsaw, so sanding down those edges with the pieces clamped will keep them perfectly symmetrical while you smooth out that curve. I'm going to be connecting these two pieces with box joints, and so this is where the two pieces lose their perfect symmetry. While they're still clamped together, I'm going to mark out every six inches and then cut out alternating sections so the two pieces can slide together. Besides sanding and painting, that finishes the two main sides of the spaceship. Here I'm using a piece of weed whacker wire to draw my curves for the shelves of the bookcase. I got lazy and decided to use the corners of my plywood sheet as the right angles for my shelves, but this isn't the most efficient use of my plywood. It does save some cutting time though. The legs were maybe the most aggravating part of this build. Not only did I have two curves that I had to draw out in a similar fashion to the spaceship's body curve, but I didn't take my time cutting out the legs, which caused me some headache later on. My video upload schedule is a little erratic these days, and will probably be more so with the baby coming soon, but the best way to stay up to date with what I'm working on is through Instagram. I try to post there frequently, and you can get some build process updates throughout my stories um, well before I get the entire YouTube video out. I'm doing my first test fit here, and you might notice some wobble on the legs. That's due to not cutting my edges perfectly straight, and while I can use a wedge here to fix things, this wouldn't be easily hideable if I wasn't planning on painting the entire bookcase, and I would've probably had to remake the legs. First off, sorry about the dark shot. I was working at night, and my garage does not have very good lighting at the moment. Anyways, another not so fun problem I had was gluing the legs in place. The curved legs did not play nice with my clamps, and while I eventually got things to stay in place, it was not so seamless. The proper way to do this would have been to use a cut piece that mated with the curve of the leg and had an edge that created two parallel points for the clamp to hold it together. At this point, there's not that much left to do except sand the thing, screw it together, and paint it.
To hide the screws here, I'm using a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to bore into the plywood about a quarter inch, then screwing in the screw and finally using a 3 8 inch dowel with some wood glue to cover up the screw head. Uh, using the Forstner bit and dowel are completely optional and are just for aesthetics. It actually makes it much more difficult to take the entire thing apart if you're using this method. Okay, so edge banding. This was actually my first time using it and I'm not sure I'd recommend it for this project. Because I cut all those curves by hand, they just naturally came out a little wavy or a little lumpy. It's hard to tell when you're just looking at them, but the edge banding does not like those lumps. I ended up getting some poor adhesion and the edge banding began to lift up and bubble in places. On the other hand, painting the edges of plywood never comes out great for me either. So let me know in the comments below if you have any edge banding tips for me or if you have any idea of what I should have done differently. Time for the shelves. If you were wondering what those square holes were all over the designs of the two rocket ship sides, I originally designed the shelves to have notches that fit into those holes and just kind of puzzle piece together. But when I decided not to trace all the parts of the rocket ship, I also removed those notches and just decided to screw in the shelves from the back. My wife likes to point out that I could have just stopped the build here and this could have been a throne for our Chihuahua. Here I'm covering up the screw holes using a dowel like I did before, however in retrospect I would have actually taken the shelves off at this point and painted them before reinstalling them into the bookcase. It would have made the painting process of both the bookshelf and the shelves a bit faster. I'm going to be skipping through the application of most of the coats of paint as I found that wasn't the most fun thing to watch someone do. But for your reference, I put on two coats of primer and two top coats of each colors, blue and white. If you don't know what type of paint to buy, well, I didn't either and I just ended up going into Home Depot and told them I was going to sand and repaint my kitchen cabinets and asked for their recommendation. At this point, I thought I ruined this bookcase because it looked so bad with just one coat of primer. I thought there was no way this was going to come out looking okay, but I'm here to tell you it gets worlds better with each coat of paint. Don't freak out if the first coat does not look how you want it.
Okay, this is the part that I've been excited to do this entire build. I bought a cheap strip of LED lights and a simple push button to integrate into the bottom of the bookcase. The LEDs take a small 1 to 2 amp 12 volt power supply and then I spliced in the push button into the positive wire of the LEDs. The LEDs came with adhesive on the backing, but I also used some hot glue just to give it a little extra strength as I was making a few tight bends when I was routing it on the bottom of the bookshelf. I absolutely love this part of the bookshelf. My original plan was to have this bookshelf sit on the ground, but I just could not help myself from mounting it onto the wall and making it float in space. I just used a few long two inch screws and made sure I was screwing it into a stud for maximal support. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a long one. Please consider subscribing, go follow me on Instagram, and check out the designs I have on Etsy. And if you end up making this bookshelf or something similar, I'd love to see it, so please reach out.